Hi, I'm SCP-20. This is Captain Sh Captain Sham. Um, we're coming to you not live from our homes, talking about the Pathfinder Dark Archive. Um, we're gonna discuss everything we think about the book, chapter by chapter. But first, let's let us introduce ourselves a little bit. And if I'm a little bit quick. I'm a little bit fast. That's because we just spent 20 minutes doing what we were just talking about, and I fucked up the sound. So let's go. Um, so I've been a DM for about 17 years now, which shocked me the first time we recorded this, but now I've come to terms with it. Um, I played so many different um, versions. I started off with 3.5, went to 4E, um, dabbled in Pathfinder First Edition, went to 5E, um, and then Pathfinder 2nd Edition, but I've also tried playing Shadowrun, um, other ones, <laughs> other, other games, um, and I enjoy just reading, like, rules and stuff and see how, um, game designers, like, problem solve to make different versions of games, um, and we stream on my channel, MessyB20, on Twitch TV, and we also upload those streams to this very YouTube channel for you guys to watch and enjoy, so check those out. Um, Cap and Sham, why don't you introduce yourselves? <laughs> Hi. So roughly, I don't know, what did we figure out 12 years ago, 11 years ago, you taught me how to play Dungeons & Dragons 4E for the very first time, and... I've just been kind of playing off and on ever since, um, running my very first game right now, which streams every other Wednesday on Messy B20's Twitch channel, um, Doom Dynasty, check it out. Uh, shameless plug over. Um, plug it. Yeah. And <laughs> I've dabbled in a few other games. Um, I guess like right now, Pathfinder 2E is my game. I love it. Um, the probably close second is Kids on Bikes. I just love how just different it is. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, longtime player, recent DM. And then Brian's more like longtime DM, recent player. <laughs> yes. But I must say that I never fully understand the rules for any of the games I played. Um, and I just wing it. So I, we should mention that we are not experts. Like I've been playing D&D for so long, but I, I keep on reading new rules. Like, oh, that's how dying condition works in Pathfinder Second Edition. Or like flanking isn't like a rule rule. It's a house rule. Um, I think in the way we've been doing flanking has been all wrong. And I've learned that through this book somehow. I don't know where I've found it, but I'm like, but I, I don't know. We still have fun. So that's all that matters. So <laughs> this is all to say that um, if you're expecting an expert opinion on this book, you're not getting it from me. Sam is a very quick study, so you can probably get it from her. <laughs> but um, definitely not from me. And um, we're just vibe checking this book, The Dark Archives, which released on uh, July 27th. And we got an early copy because I'm part of the subscribers. So, for the second time, I must ask you, what do you, what are your first impressions of the book, and like, how were you feeling? What were you thinking about it, like coming up to it? So I came into this no preconceived notions. I didn't read anything about it. I didn't watch any videos. I didn't Google anything to know what I was getting myself into. I had no idea what this book was. Um, that way I, I, I came into it kind of fresh. Um, so initial reaction is I really, I really loved it. Um, I liked the narrative format of it, that it's this guy who was part of the dark archive, which was its own department of the Pathfinder society. And this is just what he was able to grab before they completely lost access and funding and then made it into kind of this loose haphazard handbook, which once you read and understand that in the introduction, the rest of the book makes more sense. I read the introduction last. So I had read the book. I was like, why is this so disjointed? And I just don't understand. And then I read the intro and I was like, oh, <laughs> And that's something we can touch on, too, because the way that the book is laid out is, like, um, lore, rules, and then, like, mini-adventure 
or like um, a session, like a one-off, which I found mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about how that was broken up. It's like broken up by topic instead of like, I don't know what the other word, word would be, like use case, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and read, some people on Reddit aren't a fan, but so what did you think of that? Um, so what I tried to do just to prevent spoiling too much for myself is read, you know, trying to read it in order as much as I can and then giving the adventures just like a high level skim. Mm -hmm. I think there's so much of this that is so high level that by the time you get into those adventures, like I can't imagine how you would even apply it because some of the stuff is great and I really, I, and I really enjoyed it. But um, some of the things when you get in here, like cults, they don't really go into depth on any of it. I would have liked more detail. Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, what is, what's, I, you lost me. You lost my interest because I I didn't, was, I didn't get anything from it. I don't know. That chapter in particular, like. mm. I know, I was (laughs) pumped for that chapter and they were just so like, I'm hoping that like, I say as I lotion my elbows. I'm hoping that um, like that we can like look up the cults and stuff and a lot of these lore things and find out more through their like uh, Age of Ashes or Age of Lost Omens um, source books because a lot of the stuff that they went over was so vague. I remember they were talking about like the Shang Cha cult and I was like I don't even know what this cult is about like I don't even know what they believe in or what they do but we'll yeah get there. yeah we'll definitely hit it up when we get there but um let's let's start our chronological deep dive so again we split it up and then we kind of like skimmed over like everything um I did a deep dive on the first half of the book and then Captain Sham did a deep dive on the second half of the book but we swapped off just like depending on our own like excitement or interest in like certain chapters. Um, so something I'm always really interested in, even though I'm a DM, always the DM, never the player. Um, I love character building. And one of the worst things that I do as a DM is that I want to build everyone's characters for them and give that, like tell them like how they should build their characters and stuff like that. And it's, I'm trying not to do it, especially since like a lot of people are like new to the system or they don't like choices, but then that spills over to the people who know what they're doing. And then, so I, I just love reading about characters. I just love trying to make like the most specific like character possible. Um, and so it was a great, a great joy for me to like read about these new character options um, in the beginning of the book. dived into attempting a psionic character usually they're really strange and they don't really fit in into the greater world or they have really strange rules or they're broken or something and it really seems like Paizo was really afraid of giving too much power to the psychic and then they created the thaumaturg which I was really excited about leading up to this book Um, But then reading it, I just felt like it was really strange the way it interacted with, like, the rest of the magical items in the world. Because the Thaumaturg is all about channeling some sort of strange and mysterious force from a specific magical item. But you can't get anywhere else unless you're a Thaumaturg. No one else can use this item. You, not a wizard, not a witch, not any other magical person, but you specifically can use this item and only you. And it levels up with you. Um, so I, th- I just thought it was weird. But let me let me deep dive. Um, were you able to read any of the classes? 
Yeah, yeah. So I was reading, um, I was mostly interested in the Thaumaturge because I have a I have a monster hunter character who was mm -hmm. basically built with this in mind without this being a thing. Mm -hmm. I was trying to build like a witcher character, which is a basically what this is. Um and so I was really interested in it. I really liked it actually. It's it's very similar to ranger with it with the monster hunter background it's basically the same thing and that's what i don't like about it i feel like they could have just reflavored the ranger or like give these options to the ranger because it's just a ranger yeah have, so like, instead of hunt prey like instead of getting hunt prey you get um ident uh something about identifying vulnerability Mm -hmm. And so once you've examined that vulnerability, then you do an esoteric check instead of a monster lore check. Yes. And it's basically, it's basically a reskinned ranger mm -hmm. with the monster hunter background, which as someone who enjoys playing that type of character, I didn't mind it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, you've already, you kind of, you've already done it. But yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like you've already done like the two part one of the parts of the thaumaturg i feel is like the heavy ranger aspect and it's just like you could have made this another ranger subclass and that's kind of something that like dnd 5e did well it was just like okay we're going to recontextualize this class with a subclass and then with like the items like how do you feel about like the way they treated these magical items I actually, I didn't mind that so much um, because if I'm remembering it right, the way it explains it is the, the Thaumaturge is able to, um, I don't know, access some type of, like they're able to unlock it kind of as, as, an, as an item. So it makes sense that like when they pick it up, it does a thing where if I pick it up, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So the way that they explained it, which I'm not explaining very well, was better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that the whole item thing, I actually thought was pretty cool. And I'm just like imagining someone with a lot of like junk hanging off of them. Mm -hmm. But it's like iron nails that do a thing or a bell that mm -hmm. does a thing or a chalice. Um, mm -hmm. So that part I actually liked. I'm, I'm gathering... <laughs> that you didn't <laughs> i like i like the concept i love the flavor of this person with heaps and loads of magical items on them and they have to rummage through and grab the specific item that does like powers that only they can like coax out but i wish they used the magical items already available in the game like let's say the thaumaturg starts off can use magical items like twice their level or something and then this thaumaturg can double or expand the powers of this item or or this type of item or this class of item and they get this power or and then they can transfer whatever powers you get from the item to another player um like if you have a plus one sword or a sword that does fire damage, you can send the soul or the magic of that weapon to another player so they can use it as a reaction or something. I feel like there was a cool way to make this kind of like a crafting profession, similar to like the alchemist, um, and do kind of a play on that. But I just, I do love the flavor. I do love the flavor. And like, so let's start off with the thaumaturg. Let's do a blow by blow. Um, what is your favorite item of the thaumaturg? Favorite item. Um, I like the idea of a bell. Yes. they're like holly jolly too um so i really like the the visual that it brings up that you're fighting a monster and then you just start ringing bells at it like a cowbell just like they're not like a cowbell. <laughs> i wasn't thinking of a cowbell i was thinking like like a, maybe like a chain of jingle bells or something oh, yeah and um something more delicate oh yeah 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 i also like the bell and i love 
the flavor that comes with the bell. Like, even mm-hmm. though I don't like the implementation, I think they could have went somewhere interesting with, like, creating magical items or pushing magical items to their limits. I do love what they did with these items. And the bell is all about disrupting and, like, distracting people. So I believe you can interrupt, yeah, distracting Kak and love that and then you can also use it to make someone clumsy and fuck up their strike just by distracting them with this like haunting sound love that i i totally agree my favorite thematically is the mirror and i don't know Mm -hmm. something about mirrors maybe because i'm a narcissist and i'm really self-absorbed that like i love mirrors or like the idea of like a mirror verse kind of like from infinity train or something and I love the idea of like using a projection like of yourself to kind of like distract people. But I didn't love like kind of the implementation of it. So let me scroll there. For example, like. Right. Battle focused, and I wish it was more like you have a copy of yourself that can do things, or you have to deal with the um with a copy of you from the, what is it? The Endless Pale or whatever, the mirror realm that that one archivist got stuck in. Um, that I, There was cool, more cooler things conceptually that I would have liked, but I think that would be a mirror probably. Yeah, I think, I think that what you're proposing while really cool would be like, he'd be too, like, it's too strong. Like you can't yeah. be doing that. Yeah, like, true. I like that they're like, this guy's, here's, here's what, here's what your abilities are. Your whole existence is to fight. Uh, you have to be a weapon against magic and the paranormal mm-hmm. and you have to do it with your fists. <laughs> How do we make that happen? Mm-hmm. So as someone who really enjoys a melee character, <laughs> I was like, this is great because like the idea of a monster hunter was a really cool idea. So I tried to form basically a witcher character without that mm-hmm. existing in the world. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's why I like this one so much. Cause this is yeah. kind of what I had in mind. And like that character does not do magic. Mm-hmm. She doesn't, she doesn't fuck with it. Um, and then, so having this as like maybe an archetype for her is pretty great, but yeah. Yeah, so I I disagree there. I like that it's a fight fighter only. <laughs> no, I mean like it's cool that it's like a fighter and then you do it, but I would have loved more like pro like role play stuff with like this yeah. mirror. Like I don't know. I was like, oh okay, that's cool. I'm sure if I read it again, I'll uh, it would be cool. But but some of these choices, like a lot of the people online were like, there's so much customization. You get to choose between three different like items, and I'm like no one is going to make the book the regalia i think the book and the regalia are lame and the I lamp- actually agree. the lantern is giving me more what i wanted for mm-hmm. the mirror like very exploration very niche so like yeah but I would pick the lantern because I like just play kind of like silly characters that are, I have to really try hard to make them worthwhile. Um, but like the regalia, like just roll a bar, just roll a fucking bar. Um, or the, um, the book, like the book. I'm not going to like be fighting something and go like book. Like I'm not doing and that. that was so, the they tried it they fucking tried it with one of these um sample characters
with the book. She's cool. What the book? You're just kind of it just kind of writes itself like that Bjork music video. But like, only if you're going for that kind of build. Mm -hmm. So what would Seven pick from all of these? What would Seven pick? Um, well, the Bells is my personal favorite, so the Bells has to. Um, uh, maybe maybe Bells Chalice. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, the Chalice is nice. The Chalice yeah, is the cool. Chalice is cool. Um, Bells Chalice, if I ha had to pick a third one. You have to it might them. it might be the it might be the lantern i don't know Ooh, we got a lantern fan. i was and i was thinking about this like if i had to build one of these you know what 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 kind of um object would this be like because it wouldn't just be like oh a pretty shiny chalice like i could see it just being like a tanker that i just drink out of and then i'm just like oh shit, i gotta use this like tap out the drops of ale that was left in it or like rusty bells or like a lantern that doesn't work like like well but it could also i mean so captain shem's character is an android coming from um numeria i mean these could be ancient alien magical artifacts too from like androids I guess I didn't think about it that way because I don't I don't think about her in that context of yeah being you know she's a, she's a product of her environment I guess and not so much the whole android thing mm -hmm. but yeah no I really like this class I thought it was really cool mm -hmm. there are just some some things that are a little like mm -hmm. like I see yeah. I see what you did there I see what you did there. <laughs> I don't buy some of it, but it's cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like some, I, I just wish they made it more of a craft. And they have some crafting elements. You can be like a talisman maker. Mm -hmm. um, and you can like break some of your artifacts like and hand them out to different people. A cool one was that you can have like a secret home or something. Like when you hit like level tw like level seventeen or something, you can have your own like secret home or like world or maybe I'm just making no. Uh, it, it's a really weird name like a fiasmi or something. I have no fucking idea. It's in the comments. How do you pronounce it? Fuck this book! You know what? This get this book gets the fucking shot. You could have just written domain this whole time, Paizo? Apparently. <laughs> I'm trying to see like, okay, like what's what's even the language here? Is this English or is this like Scottish or something? I don't understand. Oh, I don't know. Domain. Yeah, it's it's just it's domain. Fuck that. You legit what does it mean? Domain. It's a cinema. It's a synonym. It's
the second definition, which is a law, it's possession of real property in one's own right. So basically okay. your domain. Pronunciation and trying to show how smart they are aside, Paizo. Um, I, I, I like this. I, I like this. I think it's cool. I think it like fits and it's a nice quirky little beat to take. I love the quirky beats. But you know what I kind of don't like? Going back to the items, I feel like you kind of have to pick like one of the battle items. Yeah, like I forgot. I, so the whole we like weapon is an implement that you can use. Yeah. And it's like, I forgot about that because it's such a fucking obvious thing. I don't, that I don't like. However, as the player, that's pretty cool because now you can you can combine effects from multiple implements as long as you're holding both of them. Mm -hmm. And if as long as your implement's a one-handed weapon, it's already in your hand, so you can constantly use its effects and then have a second one. So if I want to ring some bells in one hand mm -hmm. and swing with my other, I can combine their effects. So that's cool. That's but cool. also I'm like... Yeah, and then the wand... I'm like, I think wands are lame. I'm not about wands it. Wands are lame. If you make a thaumaturg and your whole thing is the wand, miss opportunities. Just use a cantrip. Make it out of here. Caster. Get out of here. Just you obviously it. want to. Just do it. Just, just do it. <laughs> just do it. Do it. Um, and um, I'm trying to think of like the other. Like I like the amulet. Like, ever since this um, class was announced, I've been walking around my house going, my amulet! Because... <laughs> I like that it can be anything, too. It's just, like, an amulet is whatever you decide is your amulet. So it could be, like, a rabbit's foot, or it could be, like, a coin. Yeah, or... and, then, and they showed, like, a little sprite. One of their, like, art pieces is, like, a sprite holding a coin. She's, like, holding a coin, and it's as big as her torso. Yeah, I mean, it's, I it's know, cute. I, I like it. It was, it was like, yeah, I was like, cool. Like, I'm glad you guys are supporting the sprites. As a sprite player right now, I feel, I feel seen. Um, all right, any closing thoughts about the Thaumaturg? So, Seven, in our Pathfinder campaign, is she taking the Thaumaturg archetype? I think yes. So when I was ex when I was exploring that as an option, so anybody who's who I don't know if we've ever talked about this on the stream or if it's just us talking to each other. I am weirdly against archetypes. I don't usually take them. He's given me every opportunity to take. He's like, Sam, you're wasting abilities. And I'm like, look, you're adding complexities to a character who doesn't need them. And so like, I just don't. But I also like haven't found an archetype that I love, and I'm like, sh her whole build is monster hunter. How cool would it be if she could also fight ghosts and cryptids mm. and things like that, and have a little bit of an edge? I think that she would. So I think that there hasn't been an archetype up until this point that made sense for that specific character. Now, mm. if I was a different ranger with a different background trying to do something else i'm sure i would have selected an archetype by now but like mm -hmm. so i think it has to be this yeah i mean yeah do it <laughs> do it <laughs> no do what you want no do i think i'd be sick i think i'd be sick and i mean i i i give this class like be, I, i'll probably make a thaumaturg at some point i'm definitely gonna make a mirror person like the mirror alter ego with the mirror that they escape from i mean i have to i have to that's so gay and I, I i've been wanting to write like a, a book about some like the mirror from beauty and the, no snow white like the one who has to kiss the witch's ass but i don't know i just love mirrors so um so let's go over it. Let's go back in the beginning of the book. We were just so excited to talk about the thaumaturg. Let's talk about the psychic. What does that say about the psychic that we completely skipped over it to talk about the thaumaturg? big into really magic characters anyway um i just don't yeah. connect i just it, we don't connect 
I'm trying to, I'm playing a sorcerer right now, but like, so I'm reading into it and I'm just like, I just don't see, I guess I was missing maybe what the edge is. Cause I'm like, I play a sorcerer with a hag background. So she does occult spells. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of cool cantrips. I, so I'm, I'm just like, I didn't, I just, I didn't, other than like the cool factor of just saying that you're a psychic, I just didn't really, I didn't get into it. I didn't connect with it the way that I did the Thaumaturge. Yeah. And that's, that is definitely something I can see. It's just, it's really hard to like separate like the psychic users from like magic users. And I feel like a lot of the times, like it started to overlap. Like they have one that's like the oscillating wave that's like fire and ice. I'm like, what the fuck is that? What the, like a fire and I, like that's just a me that's just an elementalist like i didn't see the psychic in that i know pyrotechnics are a thing but i i just thought it didn't fit um so i i guess i can using this class is and i love a crunchy class i love like even though i'm dumb as bricks i love trying to think of myself as someone who can do like three-dimensional chess with these classes but the fact that you have to set if you decide to choose to be getting spells from a different place or focus spells from a different place you have to separate these focus spells and track your focus points in different ladders and there's all these kind of like rules having to do with where you can use them. And that like, even though you don't say shit as you cast your psychic spells, you're still making all of this like commotion with your hands and like light instead of just doing the Professor X thing. I didn't like it. Unleash Psyche. You have to wait two turns each battle to pop off for another two turns where you can use your focus points to boost your cantrips, which a lot of them aren't cool, kind of like with the Thaumaturg, a lot of them just aren't cool. And then you're stupefied and terrible at casting spells. Like, and you don't get that much, you don't get that much out of Unleash Psyche. Like, let's see, what do you even get from it? You're constantly surrounded by visual manifests. Okay, cool. level which level like complicated and um and and you don't get but the thing is unlike the alchemist um and like unlike a lot of like the witch and um the other one that i just mentioned like you don't get that much out of it like you i feel that the way i built my witch very specifically i am getting my mileage out of it like the complications of the levers I'm pulling for her, I'm I'm getting so much gas. Like my familiars is fucking OP as shit. Like I'm gonna be able to debuff people for days. I like love my my um, focus cantrips that are only one action. Whereas like with the psychic, like I'm going to be debuffing myself so much that any gains I get are negligible and the fact that i have to burn focus points 
for my cantrips to be good? I don't know. I don't know. I'm bummed. So anyway, the flavor that was great, like having something like within the psychic. You have the subconscious mind, which um, decides whether you're an in-space caster or charisma-based caster, which I find cool. Don't know why they don't have wisdom. No idea. You know, the stat that's used to protect yourself against like psychic and mind control. Don't know why you can't choose that as your spell casting. I think that's dumb. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> dumb. And I want it. Um, alas. But um, so you get things like um, you get to decide if you are. Recall teachings. The heightened power of your psyche lets you recall every lesson you've ever learned. You search your mind for the right teaching, which seems cryptic, but comes into clarity when it's most relevant. And so the start of your next turn, you count as having prepared to aid all allies within 30 feet of you um, if you use the aid reaction to help one of them during that time. And then they have the precise discipline, determine the intended outcome, align thoughts, identify and resolve distractions, manifest. Intentional focus is the key to unleashing your abilities, whether that's because your, your power naturally tends to precise, discrete effects, or because you blah, 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 strict discipline, and your subconscious automatically calculates vectors and forces when your mind is unleashed, showing you the likely path um, of incoming attacks to avoid. You gain plus two circumstance bonus to AC and reflex saves until the beginning of your next turn. Yeah, I think for Seven, this would completely make sense if her mentor, instead of having, like, a mother-daughter relationship, was more of a Mr. Miyagi situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, her life could have taken, like, this could have been the same person with a completely different fork. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, like, oh, robot brain, uh, robot android brain, calculating, but... Yeah, I took it yeah. to like a, like if, if she had like a Zen, like sensei, Mr. Miyagi, like type thing where like I would look back on the teachings. It didn't make sense at the time, but now I snap into focus mm -hmm. and I do like the crane kick at you. Like that's, that's where I'm going with this. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So that's what I was thinking. And then they have another one called like Wandering Reverie, which is what I would choose because I relate to this hardcore it just, um, you are just constantly, this is kind of like dreams and daydreaming and chaotic and like sensation and just moods. And their like action you get out of this is you become concealed for like a, an action, which is, I love the concealed effect. I'm always throwing that out here as I feel. But, um, but then you pick your other subclass, which is um, your conscious. There's at least four different choices within here that just you push someone, you shove someone. And I hate <laughs> that. And you have to spend a focus point, but you only have two of them per battle. There's ways to gain more, of course, but like a focus, spending a focus point to just push someone and have like a better hit die, which might roll as a one, fucking sucks. That sucks. That does suck. Some of them are cool. Some of them are cooler. The ones that really play on like teleportation or like meaning reading people's minds. Some of them that really have that flavor are cool, but a lot of them are just like you push someone. You grab them, you grab something.
that I'm like, oh, I've just been giving that to players who cast a tech magic, okay. Or, um, magic, I feel like that could have been like, um, what is it called? What Victor is in your campaign that's airing every other Tuesday, Doom Dynasty. Is he an oracle? What is? Yes, okay. yes, yes. I, I mean, passed. that could have been an oracle background. You, you did it! You did it! Um, that could have been an oracle background to me. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't see psychic from it. Um, Silent Whisper is cool. Cranial de detonation. I like that. Put that in the pro column. Yeah, that's a pro. Yeah. When you hit level 18 or however. Who's getting level to level 18? 18 what kind of adults are getting together often enough that they can make it to level 18? I'd be so bitter. <laughs> I'd be so pissed. You were just waiting this whole time to get to level. Yeah, like, this, this is going to be worth 18. it. I'm going to blow up people. I'm just going to people's brains and then. Mm -hmm. You know, your friend gets married and you never see them anymore. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not enough. It's not enough. Your character just like just sucks. I need to be able that. to do cool things by like level three, or I'm just not playing that class. <laughs> well, Captain Sh Captain Shim, you could push them. You can push them ten feet. <laughs> you can. Isn't shove an action? Like, I just yeah. don't understand. Or you could do it from far away. Or you could just use a fucking cantrip that does the same thing. And you don't have to use a focus point. Like, okay, I'm cool. over it. I'm over it. We're we, done. We, We're done. Psychic we're done with the psychic. We're done with the psychic. I'm we're so done with it. Bummed. But am I going to play a psychic soon? After all this negativity, there are good things about this book. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there is. We're going to get to the good things. What's Sift. the next? Sift. So I think the next chapter is all you. Cryptid. archive shut down in the Pathfinder Society. <laughs> You're a bureaucrat. <laughs> Whatever. So I said what I said. In the intro, I love this. Cryptids aren't simply monsters, but rather beings that chafe against our sense of what is possible or right. So cryptids are not monsters. Like that would be 
weird to put them into that category, but they're not like conscious beings necessarily. So they kind of like ride this weird in a world full of magic and fantasy. They're like riding this impossible line. Like how crazy must something be to be inconceivable in a universe like this? And that's why I like these. <laughs> okay, throw that. Okay. Let, let me tickle your, tick your brain with that one. Um, <laughs> so the, another thing I really liked about this chapter is it's like a collection of spooky campfire stories. And the only reason they're even there is just to be like, you could do this. You could make crazy shit. And I like that too. <laughs> Which one was your favorite? Cause I have a favorite. So I really, li I liked the Ironbound siren story just because of the creepy, um, all the bodies floating in the water, just kind of turn and look at the ship at the same time. Just that visual just spooked me. Um, but I also like, I like this idea. Is it the coin <laughs> one? The lumberjack and the coins in the ground? Okay, I like the lumberjack and the coin because that, that had, that had like urban legend. That's another reason why I like these is, is the way that they mm -hmm. built these cryptids that they could be like, they're like real urban legends, mm -hmm. which I really liked. I liked the, um, was it the walker? I'm trying to remember because there's different kinds of cryptids and one of them is a rumored cryptic, cryptid that basically like, just enough people talk about something that it creates its own legend that manifests a monster. A topa. Yeah. Yes. That's a real, that's a real like life concept. I, I need to grab a sweater. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I have wireless headset now. But, uh, Good for you. Topa. Yeah. So, but like, it's, you know, it's this whole like race of them, which I, I'll get into that too, because that has an, maybe unforeseen implication related to some of the cryptid feats that you can take. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, like I really like these stories. I don't want to spoil them because if you're going to read it, mm -hmm. it's Fair. like, it's they're they're like really cool campfire stories and that's how the chapter opens up. Um, this is one of those chapters that the way that it's structured is really kind of disoriented. I don't know that I would have organized the content this way because it goes from, hey, let me tell you some campfire stories and then I'm going to introduce the idea of aftermath feats to you, which I'll ex which is before they even explain what the different types of cryptids are and how they Yeah, are. yeah, I thought that too. I'm just like, what are the... Like, so I don't know if that was just a bad, bad choice or if that is a product of this idea that this book is a hastily thrown together handbook of random shit so i don't i don't know i don't know if that was intentional i feel like even if it's a haste like it has to be a functional book and i know a lot of us are getting a, a lot of our information through like the open game license like nethys or like the ogl like site or whatever so you're not really sifting through these books so like buying the book having pdfs are more like in experiential kind of thing so i think they're playing with that but also like i don't think aftermath feats fit this book or the theme of cryptids in my opinion i th mm, i don't know about that but okay. <laughs> i do i love the idea of them oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> as a concept that i think they're really cool and i think that i think they do it, it makes sense to relate to cryptids because Aftermath feats are basically something you're stuck with after having a very specific experience with one of these kind of mythic, creepy creatures that exist in the world. against a devil and you get this like creepy glowing eye that lets you um figure out the loopholes in arguments and things like that like it's it, like you, it's a really specific circumstance you have to find yourself in with a really specific outcome which from a story building standpoint 
is pretty cool. It's like if you didn't really know where you wanted your characters to go next, you could drop them into one of these scenarios and see if they come out of it with one of these abilities, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. There's like lingering chill, which is like you've been brought to zero hit points by an enemy that has the cold trait or an enemy's ability that has the cold trait. I'm not really sure. I think that I read that wrong. Either way. So like you brought to zero hit points by a cold creature and now you leave with like some cool abilities. So I kind of like that. Oh yeah, I love the idea. Um, I'm just gonna like, I'm just flipping through here to remember. So like there's different kinds of cryptids in this book. Um, mm -hmm. There's experimental cryptids, um, which are like basically animals that have been experimented on to such a, to such a state that they don't make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're like really strong and kind of scary. And I do, I do like the idea of that, even though it's incredibly sad. Um, <laughs> it makes me think of um, like Full Metal Alchemist with the mm -hmm. chimera with the little girl and the dog. Like, so in case you're wondering, there's an example. Um, <laughs> uh, mutant cryptids are just, you know, weird mutated animals. Uh, their example in here is a mutated unicorn, which is like the grossest thing. try to fight it and fail that it's full of swords and it can do like slicing and piercing damage to you from all these swords that have been stuck through it through the centuries which that's the type of shit i do like <laughs> so this is just like really great i think if nothing else this whole chapter just serves as story fuel like they're not trying to tell you what to do with it it's it's really high level because you're just they're like just giving you these ideas to fuel your own monsters, which we know I like. I think in my, I think in the last episode, I introduced like two cryptid characters in one episode without really even knowing what cryptids were in this game. <laughs> I hadn't read this yet. <laughs> um, and then there's these rumored cryptids, which is kind of what we were talking about before, where it's like enough rumors happen that it either attracts a monster fitting that description or this cryptid just kind of manifests as a result of that legend. And I want to talk about that because I was like reading this and I thought of something really funny because all of the class feats, um, you can only get use them if you're like a ranger or a druid. And mm -hmm. there's this one called wolf in sheep's clothing. experienced hunter which kind of like gives you feel about how you would use it like you might use this to scare away somebody in the woods who you don't want to be there or or something like that and i just have this idea in mind that like seven would pretend to be a cryptid and then the rumors and legends about this cryptid in the forest actually manifests and becomes an actual cryptid and that's like this this like unintended consequence of a lot of these cryptid and then there's these rumored cryptids <laughs> that would just start popping up because of you <laughs> can, you, can you take notes <laughs> where's my dandy notebook <laughs> cryptid okay cryptid. That's, that's all that's all i need all right oh, that book is um and then as far as the class feats go, I actually think they're really cool. Um, I think I get to a certain point in leveling with a ranger where it's like, yeah, I guess I'll hit harder or okay, cool. Like there's nothing really 
at least not that I maybe I just haven't leveled up enough, but it's like I just haven't found anything that I'm really excited about. Mm-hmm. Um, but these are really interesting. Um, trying to see, and it's really I- it's really cool. I was really shocked and surprised that we were getting new like ranger um, selections or mm-hmm. ranger feats, and I was it, it was a really happy surprise for me because of course this. As we were talking about with the Thaumaturg, like, why aren't you just, like, making this Thaumaturg just, like, another range? well, at least I was saying, another Ranger subclass, but it's cool that they've seen this and they are able to give these feats and further, like, separate them and define them at the same time. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see, Unseen Animal, which is, like, a cryptid animal companion which is an interesting idea that... That's fucking cool shit. Yeah. That's cool. Um, That's cool. Yeah, so this whole chapter is just nightmare fuel, and I'm I'm kind of all about it. So I think of all the chapters I read, The Cryptid was probably my favorite because it's 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 just potential and possibility, and that's, mm-hmm. that's all it is. They're not trying to, like, throw something at you that this is what it is and you have to use it, or it's just a monster that we came up with for this book. Mm-hmm. It's this just groundwork for creating your own nightmare, which I really like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It speaks to me. And then um, in here, there's a uh, there's like a mini adventure called. Um, I don't know. I liked it. Hell yeah. I think that's all I have to say about cryptids. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's chill. All right. So we're going to head over to the cults. Um, and as we discussed prior to this, what was it called? Or secret know. societies. Secret. Oh. Okay. Secret society. Secret. Okay. Says someone who's in a cult. Um, I mean. It was cute. Um, I there just wasn't much for me here that I really like love, and I love secret society. coming out with something different because they kind of do the same thing in cults where they, they're like oh yeah this is a mystery moving on That's, like oh wait a minute i, I wish they would have gone there's a, little a bit cult more and secret society like yeah they blended in that's how that's you how they've it. merged in your brain they merged in my because i actually like i actually, actually like the cults okay so i read the secret society one mm-hmm. and i thought they were i like they seemed a lot like really like they okay i think the reason why i got confused is because they talked about this like Isoteric order of the Palantine. It seems like they were pulling a lot from like the Chinese Revolution, which I'm not sure. I mean, people in the YouTube comments definitely talk, like, you probably know more about it than me, but I don't know if that's something you should be pulling from for, like, a fantasy tabletop role-playing game since a lot of people died. It was really recent. Um, but I'm not sure. Um, the one I did like, but I thought it was a little on the nose, was this Cat and Mouse Society. It's a secret society. Um, they dress up like cats are a bunch of rich people, and they abduct people, turn their heads into mice, and hunt them. Okay. And I think that's fun. I do like that. I like that. I think it's a little, like, I, the whole actually turning them into mice is a little much, um, but I liked it. I don't even, the like, about these things, maybe that's why, because you keep on saying, like, something you keep on coming back to, and I think that's, like, 
that's really prescient or salient, one of those two, is that they kind of put it out there and they leave like the DM or the whoever's telling the story to make up the rest of it for them. And I think mm-hmm. that's cool for like the things we were just talking about. Um, but for this, I just wanted a little bit more information. Yeah. And yeah, I think I think the thing to, that's important, the important distinction here between the secret society. These chapters is that cults are almost a positive thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas secret so secret societies are more of a collection of powerful puppet masters, where a cult is a fanatical following. So it's like secret society is like hostile, cult is like the FLDS. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Um, see, I. But I it was and okay. So then, uh, mo- okay, this is probably why I got confused. Because in the secret society section, we get occult skill feats. It's like, just because you're a secret society, why do you get occult skill feats? And this goes to your earlier point, like how, like, this is, this is such a disorganized, like. Oh, yeah. So for me, there's there's a disconnect here. Yeah, and that's probably why I got confused. So it's there the disorganization that they possibly intentionally put into this book confused me. But I'm also I was also reading this quickly, and I was also like a lot of the things made me think about like my own campaigns, and then I got like imagineering. So like me coming back with Lash, like oh okay, we're back to a cult skill feat. Like, I don't know if it was active. That being said, love these. But I love them. I mean, you know, you know, the good with the bad comes the good. I don't like where this is placed, similarly to our um the aftermath feats or whatever. I love mm-hmm. them just to see. Like these are so flavorful, and they're pulling from like real life, like a cold ghost findy thing. That I can't stay mad at Paizo. So like, Oro site automatic writing is so fun. of the light to heal someone or to remove an effect on their body and i just love how crazy that is crystal healing use a crystal instead of like a healer's kit um so i think this is this section is great Mm -hmm. i think it adds so much flavor if any of the characters like your player characters pulled out this feat it's just so they're all pretty useful and they're all just have so much flavor and personality to them. Like that's why I play Pathfinder. It's these crazy fucking like skill feats. Um, furthermore, the secret society member like customization options. We need to like putting in these like creature feats for something I could have easily like prepared on the map or something I could have just did through the story and it wouldn't cause my players like you got y'all wouldn't be upset if someone got out of like prison if I didn't put it on their like monster stat block you know like so I think these are this is kind of like a waste of space some of these.
interesting this one it's like in an opera house and it's like it's like mm. opera house secret societies like that's sexy and i'm into it <laughs> mm. so like rounding back into something that i really like <laughs> but yeah so like i've just never really been super into secret societies or role play so i think that for in role play so i think that for me was like eh, see i love a secret society i love it and even though like it seems like i, I love a cult and I think that's, these are defining aspects of our personalities somehow. <laughs> oh, I love, and I love a cult too, though. I love a cult yeah. too, but I love secret societies. I love spies. So. Very close and, and I, dagger. Yeah, I love that. And I guess I didn't read a whole bunch of this, honestly. Now that I um, can see playing one. Yeah. That's all. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a great segue. Um, yeah. Deviant Abilities was the chapter in here I was most excited about, and I jumped right to the middle of the book. So, like, I didn't read it. She is a product of heavy experimentation, which is a prerequisite for some of these uh, Deviant Abilities. And I built her around the idea of her being just run over with deviant abilities before deviant abilities were even a thing so when she was leveling up like i made her an ooze morph to give her like unstable physiology and all of her spells are really gross and she's haunted because the parts she's made out of were cursed or haunted there's a ghost that lives in her face like i like threw all this weird shit together before this was even a thing. So that's why I was really excited about this. <laughs> yeah. Did it serve? Did it, it did. Did ooh ah, ah sensation? Mm hmm Yes, yes, so, yes, so. Um, yeah, I'm like reading through this now and I'm like, did I, I don't even think I read all of it because I was really excited to get to like the meat and potatoes of, about how, like, how do you get one of these? different stories in here of different deviant abilities that the dark archive have, has come across um but basically like deviant abilities you you kind you And the idea is that you've been given a really powerful ability that has a lot of consequences. Mm -hmm. And I like that because, like, I don't just want to be beefy. Like, I think it's really cool that there's this backlash to all of your abilities. So basically, like, you could um, you, you get a power that's awakened in you. Um, it could be like your bones sprout out of your hands and you can use them as ranged weapons or something like that. And the first time you use it, everything goes great. The second time you use it, maybe it hurts a little bit. But by the third time you use it, the backlash is so bad that your character is completely incapacitated and can't stand. Like, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's like, cool. I like Unlike this. the psychic. Like, where you're like oh, I used up all my focus points. Like, yeah, yeah, like let me let me I'm trying to see if I can find an example in here because like so there's different types of mm -hmm. I 
different. She already has like a bone mohawk from like, she's kind of made of like hag and dragon kin parts and some drill parts that are in there too. A lot of mouths. She has a lot of vestigial mouths all over. So she already has like surplus body parts and like bones sticking out. She has like two rib cages layered on top of each other. She's spooky. Um, mm. But like, I was thinking about this, like bone spikes, you can have sharp shards of bone tear forth from your elbows, wrists, and other parts of your body. And for one minute, you can make bone spike arm, unarmed strikes that deal 1d6 piercing damage. Um, you can do sweeping. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's on a critical hit. You push your target back, double the normal distance, and then knock it prone. Um, the, the, wet, the, the damage of this is impressive. Like, it, it can get up to 3d6 damage. But, like, the backlash of that is, like, metabolism. You, you get so hungry and nauseous that you can't fight anymore mm -hmm. because your body's using up all this energy to generate bones. That's cool. That's kind of yeah. like the, um, it reminds me a lot of the, the Oracle curse. Cause it's kind of like that, like the more you use your Oracle powers, the more you're cursed, but like more martial. So that's right up your alley. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, so each yeah, each one of these abilities it has an awakening and that has an effect. And then as you level up, you can awaken this ability further and it can get stronger. Um and it gives you some like um some options for like, you know, do you want this to just be a campaign deviant ability where basically your character falls into a situation and the whole idea is that it's temporary and they can get rid of it? Or is this like something that they have to live with? So they're going to want to level it up, mm -hmm. but that comes with more backlash. So how does that going to work? Um, mm -hmm. So I was really excited by this chapter. Um, and then other than just like heavy deviant abilities, they do have these things called quirks, which are like, they're not as heavy as the deviant abilities are. Um, they're just like cute, quirky little things that you can do. Mm -hmm. It was disorganized thing where I was like, is this just weird editing? Um, did they not read this? <laughs> so the, the, flow, the yeah. flow of the book is a little strange sometimes. And this is, this is an example of that. Um, yeah, it's just like there, there was another one here that I read. I'm trying to find it. Um, there's this one called Distant Wandering, which is basically astral projection you fall unconscious and your spirit projects out of it and then when you're in your spirit form you can't move your body but you are invisible and inaudible so this would be great for like spying on people things sneaking around getting more information things like that um just like an invisible creature affected by silence or crime Yeah. In the game. and then like the like, next time you get disorienting disorienting visions and figments cover your vision as if you're seeing through another set of alien senses for 10 minutes all creatures become concealed to you as they are covered in visual distortions that only you can see 
So you're frightened three. <laughs> and now you can't fucking see anything. And then by the end of it, your life force is siphoned away as the presence tugs your soul to wherever it resides. You become doomed one and drained two until your next daily preparations. What is even doomed? Let me, let me <laughs> like, what does that even mean? Like, I know a lot what it, I am very familiar with what it means in real life, but I don't know. <laughs> Doom. It's not even on. It's not even on my. Look at my. I don't know. What does it say? It's not on my any of my Dungeon Master screens. Wow. I mean, I am so... And see, we're not experts. We're not experts. So don't expect that from the stream if you've come this far. We don't know what fucking doomed means off the top of our heads, but damn it, we like it. Um, what did you think? Did you look through the deviant spells? Yeah. Any... Inside the person, like it phases out of existence and then it ends up in the person. So it's fun. That's fun. That was a fun spell. There's this one I like. It's sea of thought. You cover an area in a sloshing torrent of semi-solidified thought, roughly ankle high. The area becomes difficult terrain, similar to being in a shallow bog. Each round that a creature starts to turn in the area, it must attempt a fortitude save against the shifting waves of thought. On a failure, it takes a minus 10 foot circumstance penalty to its speeds until it leaves the area. And on a critical failure, it's also knocked prone. Ooh. So you send out this just like soup of thought soup. that's of just thought that's so thick, it keeps people from walking around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is going to be like level 20, like, uh, we're playing Strength of a Thousand for everyone on the watching, and that goes up to level 20, so you have to understand. Yeah. We're going to be in this campaign for fucking years. Um, next up, Doors into the Echoing Pale on the Nature of Reflections, Mirrors, and What Lies Beyond. And like what's reflecting back at you, which is supposed to be something that's real, could be like your perception of things or like somewhat like your clone or something like that. And I loved all the different like variations on the theme that they provided. I loved like how they described the mirror world, um, which was very like surreal and creepy. Um, the reflection versatile heritage is also a lot of fun. Um,
I don't know what that spell exactly does, but it sounded cool. So I was like, mm. uh, okay, so they had a lot of traps, hazards of perception, which are really cool. I'm not going to go into because I might use them in a very... So like mystique. That's cool. I'm into that. It's cool. I'm really into it. If I make my mirror, mirror, mirror person, they're getting that alter ego dedication. I think it would be would have been perfect for um, Mika from Doom Dynasty airing um, every other Wednesday. Um, but I think her vigilante shit is cool. Yeah, she has a very uh, not the and I'm not gonna spoil it for you. She has a very specific. Um, So it's, yeah, seven days from us recording. As you're watching this, cool. be sure to check out the stream. Um, cults! And I'm realizing what time it is. Cults! Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna speed run the last little bit of it, which, like, let's be fair, we got through the really interesting stuff. Um, yeah. The cults, um, I actually really enjoyed this chapter. Um, I... that the only way to to purge your sorrows and to connect with your true self is to imbibe and give in to your base basic needs and your the primal needs that you experience while intoxicated and their rituals are basically massive parties that last like three days there's like this huge cult of people go on a bender together and you're supposed to surrender to you know whatever your need is whether it's like sex or violence or is one that's made up of multiple faiths. So like you could belong to like the, ch the church of Caden Kalian, who's all about revelry and just having a good time. Or you could be a follower of like Wakong, Sun Wakong from uh, Tianxia, who is like really into having a good time. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the idea is just like, you know what? We're all just people. Let's just get, let's shed the bullshit and have a good time. And I, I respect it. Drinking, smoking, <laughs> trying to free my mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I also liked, um, they talk about the Red Mantis, which is a, which is a cult of, it's a mercenary cult. So it's not just like a group of mercenaries. It's a cult devoted to shedding blood and assassinating people, which is really interesting. Um and I think the coolest one in here, other than the cult of intoxication, was uh, Heralds of the Herald, I think is the one that I liked. Yeah, so it's in Chelyax, which is basically like Nazi Germany. It's like just a terrible place that's literally devoted to evil, like very publicly. And this cult is devoted to the idea of being good, decent people and like forming a rebellion against evil but it's a cult which is like has like a negative connotation but a cult in an evil place is just a collection of good people trying to do something good and i think that's just like so sweet <laughs> yeah i love that that's cool that's a um, there's this other cult the cult of the unyielding which is really interesting because they only gave them a paragraph and i would like to i like this because they worship Gabite, which 
is a goddess who doesn't like to be prayed to or worshipped. So the way that they are a cult and devotion to her is they just believe in dignity above all else and finding dignity in your suffering. And basically they'll like take followers and teach them how to live their life uh, with pride and dignity. And then after like a year and a half, regardless, or it's a year and a day, um, after a year and a day, the two must part ways, whether the student has finished their training or not. (laughs) So they like bring someone in, try to teach them how to survive the world's brutality with dignity and grace. And I love just, this. This is my a, character. A year and a day, like, they're just bye. like, bye. And then you're, they're just like. <laughs> oh, I thought you were joking. Oh. I. Hell yeah. That's going to, I, that's going to. Mm. Mm. Yes, there's like a good like six or seven cults in here that they give you just like a quick peek into. A lot of them are very like mysterious. Um, which is also like the way that the book is framed is that this guy paragraph, some of these have a full page, um, which kind of leads to the narrative element of the whole book. But um, I really enjoyed the cult chapter. Um, it's very it's very high level on some of these where it kind of like leaves it up to you to kind of interpret how zero hit points you get all this shit because your vessel takes over or whatever like weird entity that you're hosting within your body oh that's cool and you get all this shit based off of that which is really cool um and then they have new like domain spells for for clerics for that's really cool so these are all like dark and twisted um, so I definitely want to show this to Bove, uh, Pepe, um, in our Pathfinder, like, homebrew campaign, because I feel like you'd love these. Oh, absolutely. I love, I love his character so much. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. I decided that if I, if I die in that campaign, I'm going to be a nun of the Church of Caden Kalian. You know, some people don't want that. So good. Some people hate that's that. A, that's another video, though. That's another video. That's another video <laughs> when we go through the religion. The different- Um, have another witch patron they've been sleeping on witches for this whole time don't know why there wasn't one in the book of the dead honestly because they i feel like that that's like the perfect class for that book but this one is all about making packs with people and getting people to go into your dirty deeds and i kind of wish i did this for mildred um because i think it would be perfect for this campaign we're in but i'm happy with what she has right now because nature
Um, Yeah, so while we're in curses and packs, I was reading through curse items earlier, and I found one in here that I I love, but it's, like, sad. Okay, okay, hit me with it. <laughs> hit, hit me with it. Okay, it's called The Rose of Love's, of Love's Lost. Aww. It's a ruby red crystal rose with no thorns, um, which seems to grant a boon to a loved one, but it draws three beads of blood when first bestowed upon lovers but it can be found anywhere even burying it buried innocently in a treasure hoard you activate romantic attraction this item um this item functions only if you feel genuine attraction and desire and it doesn't function if you know the item's curse so the only way that this thing works is if you love someone and you give it to them as a gift not knowing that it's going to hurt them so you give it to them. They have to succeed a DC 27 will save. Um, and every 24 hours, the victim attempts another will save to break the spell. If they fail three consecutive will saves, they become doomed, which is relates to like death saving throws. When I go oh, to okay. They could die. Um, as the rose inflicts a lethal wasting disease upon the recipient, the value can't decrease well, the curse continues. Instead, it worsens every three days. Um, the victim fails to break the rose's spell until the victim either dies or shakes off the enchantment. A successful saving throw or remove curse ends the charm and enables the victim to begin decreasing their doomed value. So basically, you find this thing and you give it to someone you love and then it kills them. <laughs> That's awful. That's fucked up. Sounds playing. like something I would put in my game, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good thing there's no one for me. Um, <laughs> um, um, and then there's a... <laughs> into it that long that I was like oh that concept's cool like that's that's really cool I love that so much like I could see like maybe my nun character doing that where it's like none of this matters anyway like <laughs> yeah Sure, when do I suck? Sure, you can have my soul, but you have to defeat the genie that took it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, <Stupid. laughs> yeah, the whole idea is that you just make so many deals that you get really good at reading fine print and manipulating those deals in your favor. I love that. I love that. So I'm just, pissed that you called dibs because that sounds so much. I'm fun. not calling dibs, you can have it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying it's my, it. I think it's my favorite in the book though. Like, I, I mean, there's so many good ones, but this one is just like so fucking funny. <laughs> that like, just the, I, it's one of those ones that just gives you so many ideas and those are mm -hmm. the ones I really like. 
Hell yeah. No, I'm fine. Dope. If you're a DM, I'm gonna say this. If you're a DM, great, fantastic work. Um, the player has to. Yeah. But anyway, time loops, time travel, time. Did you read this one? No. Okay, I didn't read it. And this one sounds cool. And I'm sorry, my viewers, that we didn't read this. Yeah, one. I don't know how I can. Um, just looking at it, I'm gonna say, boo! No, it's, 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 like they have a new oracle that's all time based, like an oracle subclass. It's all about being trapped in the space time continuum. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay, it's, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to read this chapter. I'm gonna give it a yes. I'm gonna say yay. And then they have like archetypes that. called like. The Fine. Fucking love this. Fucking love it. Love it. The whole reason I'm into psychics is like going through dreams and going through like different topsy turvy realities. I really love the movie Paprika, and that's like one of my like favorite things to like go to, um, or like one of my favorite like directors. Um, all of my favorite movies have stuff to do with dreams or like being trapped in like your mind and stuff. It's something I really love and relate to. So fucking love this chapter. Love how they talk about like how people make their own realms of imagination. Of imagination or like these realms. Um, what you would look like in a dream and how different that would be based off of your own perceptions or your character's perceptions of your, themselves, which is fucking cool, like, role. Like, they didn't put anything as someone's soul's a thief, so it's see-through. And your character might notice that or their bowl is on the opposite side or something. Just so many cool fucking things. Rituals to go inside people's minds. And spoiler alert, like this um, Mr. F shit. No, I'm not gonna say anything. I already said too much. I already said too much, but I am so inspired just by this chat. And um, they have a whole new rule set based off of like the social or um, mental skills that you have, like intimidation, diplomacy. Those do different things inside a psychic duel. Fucking cool as shit. Love it. But your physical prowess still like goes through, so anyone could win at a psychic duel. Um, Um, I, I do like its inclusion, but I would you would have to speak to your DM and make sure that you you would get some use out of this. Um, my
they, in Ab the Eberron campaign setting, they had um, a race or an ancestry, I should say, of characters that are humans that got their minds willingly overtaken by a dream person. So that dream person took over their corporeal form. Um, so I love just dreams and fantasy. I love the idea of me being like a dream, a sleepwalker, a dream magic person. I love it. I love it. Look, what did you think? What did you, what would, if you were to grade this book on a scale from F to A, what would you give it? I give it like, um, give it a solid B, I think. I agree. I'm right there. Like there's, there's there. definitely room for improvement. There's some stuff that they missed, but like, for the most part, it's really good. It does inspire you to make some shit. There is a lot in here to be excited about. Um, the book is also beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to give anyone any advice on whether or not they should spring for the hard copy. <gasps> yeah. So like, you know, I, I, when I was first reading this, I was like, oh, I have to get the hard copy. And then by the time I was done, I'm like, I, I really don't, that seems frustrating. So I'd probably skip the hard copy and just go for the PDF. But I do think you need it. I think it's a good product. Mm -hmm. I think it's good story fuel. Yes. yes. So all in all, good experience. And it gave us a lot to debate and talk about, which is... A product of a good thing so <laughs> yes anything that provokes a conversation i think is a great product i know i shat on like the classes a lot i think i mean i think a psychic is just i think they missed an opportunity there and i think a lot of my quibbles with the thaumaturg are just really specific of what i'm looking for in a class but i think it's cool and i love the flavor but everything else was so cool and like my realm of where I want to take fantasy, especially with, with like the mirrors and secret societies, cults, dreams. And like, even though I didn't like, I don't really um, am appeal or interested in like cryptids or anything. I like that it's in there and I like how like it adds to the vibe and like the mist of like just mysterious creatures and just mysteries i just love mysteries oh my and surprises um surprises yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's late um so yeah definitely check out this book definitely check out our other campaigns currently streaming um obviously we, we talked a lot about doom dynasty which is cap and sham's campaign if you want to plug that <laughs> again yeah every other wednesday next episode is today the 27th which is when this is going online mm -hmm. if you see it and you're interested uh it streams how do, seven, seven eight central. eight seven central like how do you how do you format that in in broadcast speak i don't know um, um 7 p.m central 8 eastern there you go boom something 
um, takes place in the fey dimension of first world. There's political intrigue, conspiracy, weird curses, cryptids. <laughs> come, come check it out. <laughs> Um, of course, I have a lot of my different campaigns as well. We have um, the Pathfinder Lodge. Path we need to come up with a better name for that. But um, that is my homebrew campaign where I just throw shit at the wall just to make my players happy. And um, are, you, are you happy, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead. And then we have Strength of Thousands. Everyone who's on this channel probably knows of it and probably own camping. We've talked about that in this video as well. Um, we're at the Mugimbia, the magical camp is kind of like Hogwarts, but greatly inspired by African um, folklore. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool. And then we have a great, like all of our groups were really great. Um, but yeah, check those out. Um, and we'll be reviewing, I don't know, which one do you want to review next, Sam? Um, I guess we could go backwards. What, what's chronologically the Book of the Dead or? Book of the Dead or like Last Wall. Something like Last, Knights of the Last Wall, which is kind of like the game of like the Knights of the North Watch or whatever. The Wall. Something about walls, keeping things out, building walls. So whichever. Building means, walls. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll let you guys know. But until then, I hope you roll nothing but 20s, even if they're a little messy. And thanks for watching. Bye.